Welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock. State flags were lowered to half staff in Oregon today, an order from Governor Kate Brown. It's in honor of George Floyd, who died while in police custody in Minneapolis on Memorial Day. Today, hundreds came together in Minneapolis to honor his life during a memorial service. While protests calling for justice and change continue in cities across the country. Yesterday in Portland, we saw an incredible display. A massive crowd moved from Revolution Hall in Southeast Portland and across the Morrison Bridge before gathering outside the Justice Center downtown, peacefully protesting for hours. But around 2 a.m. after most people went home, a small group of remaining protesters began clashing with police. We saw video like these pop up on social media showing fires. Officers said people had fireworks and glass bottles that they were throwing at officers. It was a tumultuous end to the day, but we don't want that to take away from the hours and hours of peaceful protests that drew an estimated 8,000 people to downtown. We have heard from several sides of the protests, but one voice we've not heard from are police on the front lines. Tonight, that changes. Pat Doris reports. There are two groups of cops we will focus on tonight. The first wear those white shirts that read liaison officer. The police bureau created the team a year and a half ago. We've seen them from Sky 8 talking with protesters and others, and police leaders say the goal of the team is to find out what leaders of demonstrations want to accomplish and how police can help them accomplish that. And then to encourage uh, organizers of protest events to help us separate out anyone who shows up wanting to use that environment as a, a place to commit criminal acts. And then there are the cops who ride on the side of SUVs toward trouble after the peaceful protesters have gone home. They're called the Rapid Response Team. Lieutenant Franz Schaining is in charge. He took some questions head on, saying they're not trying to militarize the police with all the gear they wear, just protect themselves. He also answered the question that many have about why police use those flash bang type munitions to break crowds up as they turn violent. Many, he said, ignore the constant warnings that are given over loudspeakers. This is kind of a, a better way to catch their attention and say, hey, stop what you're doing, what you're doing. It's time to leave, leave the area. Uh, the other thing is making it uncomfortable for people or, or trying to change their behavior through pain compliance. There's no way around it. But sometimes some simple pain compliance in terms of using a riot control agent uh, will accomplish the goal of changing the behavior, stopping the dangerous thing that's happening without having to use other physical force that has a higher risk of injury. And then he said he wanted all of us to know, not for sympathy, but for understanding what it's like for the officers themselves to deal with the violence night after night. My team has been out there the last six nights, five, six nights, I've lost track, honestly, and we are physically and emotionally exhausted. We are physically and emotionally in pain. I have officers that are injured, physical injuries, and I can tell you that every night when we come back to the, to the precinct, we're emotionally in pain because we're seeing a community divided like we have never experienced in our careers. People have this sense that we enjoy going out and doing what we do even when it turns into crowd control, and I can tell you there's nothing further from the truth. We love our community. We want to serve our community and facilitate free speech. Most protesters are peaceful, but some are not and it gets ugly after the peaceful folks have gone home. But I see a small group of people coming downtown who are angry, who just want to fight against the system, who look for every opportunity they can to turn it into a violent situation, a violent conflict with the police. And we're doing the best we can to, to avoid that. But at the end of the day, you saw Friday night what happened with the destruction downtown. We have an obligation to prevent that from happening. We have to maintain public order in the city of Portland. That's our job, that's what we, the oath we swore. And to a certain extent, when we're around the Justice Center and we're on a fence line, there's nowhere else for us to go to de-escalate that. They tried to burn down the Justice Center Friday night. We can't walk away from that. So we're doing the best we can. But to a certain extent, if they intend to keep coming and pushing that conflict, we, we're at a loss for other solutions right now. And I'm, I'm open to any community member who's got ideas for other solutions. Pat Doris, KGW News. Times are already hard for bar owners during the pandemic, and this doesn't make it any easier. Two people damaged a bar in Ankeny Alley early this morning. Azim Patel owns Fuse and got a notification on his phone that someone was messing with one of his doors. When he got to the bar to check it out, 
He found this hole in the window and glass shattered on the ground. And you can see here security cameras caught the whole thing. A young woman and a man go through the side gate and smash the glass with a baton. And get this, the man and woman were filming it and then just walked off. It's draining, you know. Um, we're barely like making it right now. It's just one thing after the other. It just adds to the stress levels. It happened a while after peaceful demonstrations ended last night, right around the time Portland police reported a small group of vandals were causing chaos in the city. A big announcement from Portland Public Schools today. Superintendent Guadalupe Guerrero says school resource officers will no longer have a regular presence on school campuses. Guerrero says it's time to re-examine the district's relationship with the Portland Police Bureau. He plans to invest in more social workers and counselors. Mayor Ted Wheeler says a change is needed. I'm committed to doing everything I can to disrupt the patterns of injustice. This right now is about the community telling us what they need. Commissioner Hardesty in particular has advocated long for this reform. In a press release, Portland police say it is committed to listening to the community and adapting as needed to best meet their expectations. We also spoke with Daryl Turner, the Portland Police Association president. He says if schools call police, they'll respond just like any other call. In Minneapolis, protesters have gathered every day since George Floyd's death 10 days ago. But today, the crowd was different. They came together outside a family memorial, quietly and respectfully honoring his memory. Reverend Al Sharpton spoke at the memorial today, calling for justice and change. It's time for us to stand up in George's name and say, get your knee off our necks. The service wrapped up with a powerful moment of silence lasting eight minutes and 46 seconds. That's the amount of time prosecutors say the arresting officer's knee was on Floyd's neck. Today was just the beginning of a long goodbye to Floyd. A public memorial will be held this weekend in North Carolina followed by a public viewing and funeral Monday and Tuesday in Houston. An artist has painted a larger than life mural honoring the life of George Floyd right in the heart of downtown Portland. Devin Haskins tells us how the artist took it upon herself to turn boarded up windows into a tribute to lives lost to violence. During Friday night's riot, looters smashed the front windows and broke into multiple stores. Today, broken windows have been replaced with plywood, some painted in black. And I'd walk by the Apple building and it was all painted black and it felt like they'd made a canvas for me. Emma Berger says that was on Monday. She went home, grabbed what she could, ran back to the Apple store and started painting. Everyone's good at something different and I can paint and I can paint really, really big things. <laughs> with no plan in place, she began on the face of George Floyd and added the words he said with a knee pressed into his neck. I can't breathe. It's such an important cause and everyone, everyone has to protest in the best way they can. The impromptu mural stands out as a focal point in a quiet downtown. And I just think it's beautiful, you know, just being able to express uh, oneself through art and being able to have a, uh, a place where people can come express their feelings. It's a place to reflect on how we as America got to this point, a place to pay respects to those that have lost their lives. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and many more. It's, it's not an isolated incident. There's a lot of faces to be remembered, and this seems to be a good place to remember them right now. They are just a few of the faces and names that millions around the world are protesting for. People are finally getting a loud enough voice to probably be able to stop it and to make some change, and everyone needs to help in whatever way they can. In downtown Portland, Devin Haskins, KGW News.